Driving on the Barrett Parkway right now, making my way through New York, then through Connecticut, then into Massachusetts to my Boston SEO SEM trip. I think the last time I was driving up this parkway was I think January of last year. It was during that massive snowstorm. My family and I had a trip, our winter vacation up in Boston for some reason, um, and it was just insane weather. Um, it took me, I think about almost six hours to drive up. We timed it pretty badly, um, but it was a fun trip after all. But I'm looking forward to driving now when there is absolutely perfect weather. It might be raining a little bit later when I get there, but hopefully not too bad. It should be a nice smooth trip. This video is sponsored by Rank Ranger, an all-in-one SEO platform that offers dozens of customizable tools and reports. Check them out at rankranger.com. I'm heading over to talk to Dan Shore from Evolving SEO. I'm not exactly sure which topic we're talking about yet, but he's a very, very interesting, I guess, progression into the SEO industry. And he's pretty well known for his technical SEO chops and some other features. So looking forward to talking to him now. Thanks, Dan, for... Uh letting me interview for the vlog, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So could you tell us or me a little bit about your history? I think you started sometime in 2007, but can you tell us a little bit about your history? Yeah, so uh, the real quick version, I'm a was first a music student. My degree is in classical piano. Uh, if you ever wanna have a degree that will not get you any sort of job whatsoever, get a classical piano performance degree. It's a fun story, but not anything that was uh, good for the job market. So I did music in my 20s and then I hit 30 and you know was married and had a house and all that kind of thing and um, essentially needed a way to kind of transition to something that was more like a real job. Right. Uh, I had been building websites for myself and kind of doing some marketing on the side for myself and my dad's companies. Uh, and then when I discovered SEO was actually a thing that people did for their full-time job, yeah. I was like, wow, I can actually just do that. I don't have to build the website or uh, design it because I'm a terrible designer, I could just do the SEO. So when I realized that, that's when I decided to do SEO full-time. That's awesome. So that was, you did SEO full-time when you were in your family business or? So I started doing SEO full-time in 2013. Okay. But prior to that, I was building websites, I was coding, I was design like designing terribly uh, for myself and for my dad's businesses and a couple friends, just kind of on the side. And they all would say to me, okay, great, you made me this website, but how do we get traffic from right. Google? So I kind of, the classic story, I had to learn it and do it all kind of on my own. And you started evolving SEO? 2010. Okay, yeah. that was doing the design stuff first. Web so, design and um, yeah, evolving SEO started where I was um, making WordPress websites for local companies, like okay. my dentist, uh, plant nurseries, uh, other music schools, and I was putting SEO into that. And it wasn't really till 2011 or 12 that I totally stopped doing all the web design stuff. And what I found interesting, I was reading your bio, you talked about how you were kind of like broke. Yeah. And you had to do this with like no money. Yeah, exactly. So can you tell like, how broke were you so people can understand what that yeah, means? Yeah, I mean, so uh, my wife and I tell the story all the time. When we were first married and living in our first apartment in Maine, our heat got shut off. I uh, mean, that's how broke we were at that time. Yeah, I mean, when I first started doing SEO, you know, I was basically on a music teacher's salary. I was teaching private piano lessons. And that is not a lucrative endeavor, um, especially, you know, if you're not doing it full time, so. I've heard so many stories of SEOs pretty much like some homeless SEOs literally just learning SEO. Justin Briggs. In like, Living in his car, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people like that. Um, the one who got a job at Hawaiian Airlines. These people literally were living on the street. Yeah. Working, then going into some free internet cafe with their laptop. Yeah. And literally just making money either through affiliate income. Yeah. Or through doing SEO for some clients. Yeah. And their career, you know, going off from that. So it's just amazing to hear these types of stories. Well, and that's the beauty of SEO is you can just do it on a laptop with an inter internet connection, which was the most amazing thing to me because I'd always done jobs where I had to go to the job and physically do it. Right. And I think that's one of the amazing opportunities that SEO presented. Okay, and now 
you're pretty well known in the SEO space for your podcasting. Mm -hmm. So you just did an interview, uh, podcast with me just uh, yeah. a few weeks ago, I yep. guess, and it actually went live today, which is actually yesterday, August 13th. Mm -hmm. Not sure, this will probably go live in a month or so. Yeah. Um, but um, why did you get into podcasting? Just because I, purely because I wanted to. Um, you know, I think through being a musician and doing also video production when I was in high school, I always have just loved digital content. Um, I, I've tried to come up with a more like noble or interesting reason, but it's really just because I wanted to do a podcast. No, that's that's a great reason. Yeah. I mean, um, the reason I started this vlog was just because I bought a camera. Right. I mean, so I needed something to do with it. Um, <laughs> and there's no real noble reason around it outside of hopefully it helps people after the fact, but it's more for just experimenting, just trying out this new media and seeing how it works. Yep. Um, and it's grown in popularity. You, could you describe you know, when you first started this back, I think, four years ago? Yeah, three and a half years three ago, years about. Ago, yep. It's grown a lot. I mean, yeah. Was there any, like, point? First, what are the numbers right now? Yeah, so the current numbers are an average of four to 5,000 downloads per episode. In the first two or three months, the episode is out. I have some older episodes that have almost eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 downloads at this point. When I first started, uh, March of 2016, you know, I had no idea what was going to come of the podcast. I didn't know if it would grow at all. And I remember when I launched my first few episodes, people tweeting, subtweeting about how they thought it wouldn't work and how they wish podcast interviewers did a bit better job and blah, 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 and they could do better. Like, I remember the subtweets. Yeah. Um, so at the time I launched it, I think a lot of people were skeptical that there was room for another SEO podcast. But I think just trying to be really, really consistent and also focusing on the quality of the interview itself has helped make it a little more widely known. That's for sure. I mean, I think even then, in 2016, there was concerns that even podcasting itself is going to go away because yeah. everybody's doing video and yeah. it's audio only. And it's really, I mean, the recent news in the past year or so, podcasting has really taken off. And with the Google news around Google surfacing podcast content and so forth, Yes. even this morning, Glenn Gabe just tweeted that that interview you, we did that you published yesterday is yeah. already in you know, Google search yep. results. as a podcast. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. And Spotify is really coming into play. Like I now have actual download numbers on Spotify as well for the podcast. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, was there any specific podcast episode that really like, all right, this is where the podcast took off? Um, no, it was a very slow climb. I mean, I think uh, a couple milestones that come to mind are when I interviewed Noah Kagan. Um, it, he actually approached me to be interviewed because he was trying to promote his podcast at the time. And I've helped Sumo with SEO on and off. Um, and that episode is the, the number one most downloaded episode because okay. he has his own podcast. So people go to iTunes, they search Noah Kagan podcast, the episode with him shows up. So there is some SEO happening inside of iTunes yeah. um, store. That and probably when I interviewed John Mueller um, in the fall of 2017, I believe, a few of the people who had subtweeted skeptical of my podcast when I first launched wrote to me and said they were very impressed that I got him on the show. Um, so that seemed to be another milestone. I gotta say, a lot of people. I do a lot of interviews. Yeah. You're when you we inter you interviewed me or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. That was probably one of the more enjoyable ones. So awesome. You definitely know your stuff, and really, it was great. Who was your favorite guest? Don't say me. Say somebody else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, that's a it's a very tough question because I think there's favorites from different perspectives. I it's think some guest. people have shared technical things that totally blew my mind. Okay. Some folks have been super creative. Right. Um, some told a really good story. Uh, you know, one that comes to mind is I interviewed somebody who's not super well known in the SEO space, but his name is Tyler Hakes or Hawks, and he helped College Raptor when they first grew, and he just had a great storytelling style and approach to content marketing. You know, his episode is one that comes to mind. And that's what I really like to try to do with the show is not just get big names on the show. That's not what I care about. Right. What I really care about is getting actual practitioners right. whenever I can. You know, I, w I would rather get the person that is in the weeds doing the SEO work and knows their stuff cold than just a name. That's sometimes hard to do. Yes. Get those guys yeah. Out. So I am always paying close attention to speaker conference lists and who is being interviewed on other places like your show or Edge of the Web and things like that to try to find folks under the radar. Cool. Talking about getting under the radar. So obviously you do a lot of SEO. That's yeah. where you, I guess, make your money. You probably don't make much money podcasting, I would assume. Yeah, but not at all. Yeah. I mean, it probably helps you with business in some, in some way. Yeah. One of the things that's going on recently is a lot of discussion around these core updates, mm -hmm. these Google core updates where Google will go ahead and release, I think it started probably before the Medic update. I think they used to be called Phantom updates unofficially. Yep. 
Um, and then over and over again, every few months, Google will release another core update. Yeah. Can you tell us what your thoughts are around these core updates? Yeah, my thoughts are very different. And I want to write a post. I have a lot of material in drafts about this. Right. But I think, and I want to talk specifically about examine.com, because I think a lot of people are currently talking about that site. If when this publishes, I'm not sure what's going to develop between now and then. But the biggest thing I think everyone's missing is when you look at examine.com, their pages really are not designed from scratch to rank for what they were ranking for. So an example is... So just back up, examine.com is um, what type of site? Yeah, it's an independent medical site. Um, they write about supplements and medical terms. Uh, and the and, writers are top yeah. notch, right? Yeah, they're very well researched, um, very science backed, okay. very thorough, really high quality. Okay. And everyone is very sort of surprised that they're not ranking well anymore. Right. Um, but when you look at the searches that they had been ranking for and have dropped off for, one example is creatine. So you're a user, you search Google for creatine you're not looking for the type of content that Examine has. Yes, it's high quality. Yes, it's high researched. But it's not structured in the way that users and maybe what Google is looking for. So a typical medical term, like when you look at WebMD, it need, the architecture needs to be creatine. What is it? And then either on that page or linked to it, you need to have benefits, symptoms, um, symptoms uh, cures, blah, 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 blah. Um, Examine's content is not structured in that way. And I believe that it's not actually what the user wants. So the mistake I believe every SEO, most SEOs are making, is they're trying to look for this sort of site-wide punitive reason or mistake that Google is making for the reason why their traffic has dropped. But when you go into their data and you actually look at the keywords, and this applies to all sites I've analyzed for core updates and medic updates, it's not a site-wide punitive issue. The issue is the content is not structured and displayed in a way that's matched with the keyword for what the user wants, for the information architecture, and for the intent of what the user wants. So you're saying it's not just about is the content written in, in an authoritative manner or, or the content's written by somebody who's an expert in the field. Yeah. It's also about where, if the searcher would go to this page, yeah. are they getting the content written in a way that makes sense to answer the query. Yeah, I mean, literally what it comes down to is if I showed you side by side WebMD, Healthline, and Examine, an outline of the structure of the information, WebMD and Healthline cater exactly to what searchers want and what Google is looking for, because Google's looking for what users want. Examine's content is not structured in a way that is promoted promoting towards ranking well in search. Do you think they can easily restructure their content to make that work, or it's going to be a big job? I think it's a big job. So also, I mentioned to you before we started recording, in full disclosure, I was one of the SEOs that helped examine.com in early 2018. I blueprinted for them um, structures for four or five of these different medical terms. Right. So the way I approach it is I start with creatine, and then I literally do all the mid and long tails off of that to architect out 10 to 12 to 15 pages for an entire hub section around creatine. I mean, when you boil it down, like creatine is a big, big topic or any medical supplement is a big, big topic. And you can't just have one page in many cases um, that's gonna rank for that thing. Like you need to build out the subpages that go through symptoms with curcumin. You need to have curcumin versus turmeric, which is very highly searched as well. Um, so I think the, to sum up, the fundamental problem is you can't just throw eat on a page that is not structured correctly. Right. And uh, the other element of this too is, for better or for worse, WebMD and Healthline, they deliver content in a way that I call fast food content. Right. It's like heading, 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 heading with like a couple paragraphs, and it's very easy for the user to land on that, scan the points, right. and then read the subtext if they want to. Examine's content is like a three hour gourmet dinner with <laughs> like, you know, all kinds of wines and appetizers. It's, it's very overkill. Very for the user experience of, for what they're looking so for. So it's definitely a different way of looking at these core updates. Yes. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Could you, uh, we don't have much more time, I like to give you the videos kind of uh, snippets. Can you tell us like when a client comes to you, what's your like approach? How do you treat your clients in terms of an SEO analysis? Yeah, so I, I mean, what I was just going off of with the core updates, yes. for me, everything begins with the keywords right. being identified and how does that align to the site. Okay. And it sounds super simple. 
Like when I say this and I tweet about it and I talk to people about it, people are like, oh yeah, do like keywords and blah, blah, blah. But when I actually look at sites, the biggest problems, the biggest mistakes they make is they either don't have a page to address a certain keyword they want to rank for. Right. Like you want to rank for men's jackets, you need a men's jackets category. It sounds so super simple and that Example is simple, but when you actually look at websites, they're not accounting for that. Then, if they have the page, it's the wrong page or the wrong content type. Super simple example, you can't rank a product category for an informational search or vice versa, right? You need the right content type. And back to these big like topical keywords like creatine, or I was just talking to a client yesterday about ranking for regression analysis. Right. You can't just have a page that dives too deeply into like how do you use regression analysis. You need something that is much more broader in scope and addresses all the, the major points of that. And what I call like a hybrid piece of content, which is content, but also a glorified table of contents that links you to all the other pieces of content about regression analysis. So that's really a huge mistake. So I start there with all clients. Like, do they have the right transactional or informational or hybrid pieces of content to address all of the keywords that they want to rank for? Uh, and of course, I do all the technical stuff too. Right. Site speed, structured data, like all that um, is really, really important. I'm also super into accessibility from the user standpoint. So um, can somebody colorblind see this, ADA compliance, et cetera? Right. Um, so I'm really, really super into that. I think Google might look at things like that, like text to background contrast right you know you see that in a chrome and spec tool right so i go very in depth on the technical side too but again you can't just throw technical fixes at something that's not the right content or page types it has to all be in place awesome i appreciate this, this is a really amazing information how could people learn more about you and your company yeah if they want to hire you or whatever yeah so evolving seo.com is where my business and podcast lives okay. and then you can easily find me on twitter dan shore d-a-n underscore s-h-u-r-e on twitter um, LinkedIn, all the other typical places, YouTube, I'm Evolving SEO on YouTube, uh, where I have some older vlogs and some video content there. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Barry. Appreciate it. That was a super interesting meeting with Dan Shore from Evolving SEO. I'm off to see now Eric Ng from Proficient Digital. Should be a pretty interesting meeting and looking forward to talking to Eric. I've known him for forever, so it should be fun.